Now today you'll be hearing about a company that I believe will surprise many people in 2021. Not only that, they've always been a consistent and generous dividend paying company. And let me pull up this for you to see over here. They've been paying dividends through good times and bad. This company is none other than Bausti. And if you don't really know, Bausti is one of the oldest listed companies in Singapore. Right now, it does have a sizable war chest, which means it's very healthy in terms of financial statements. And not only that, there are four key major business segments. The first is in engineering, the second in real estate, the third is in geospatial, and the last is in healthcare, which is a newly created segment. I'll be showing you exactly why I believe they are firing on all cylinders. And especially geospatial is a beneficiary of COVID-19, this crisis. So very surprising, correct? So follow me on this tutorial. I'll show you exactly why they are my top pick for 2021. Hi guys, welcome back. Now the first segment I'd like to share with you is actually Bausteed's healthcare segment. Now this segment is really still at infancy state, it's really not contributing much. In fact, it's still loss making. So Bausteed's healthcare segment is really a long term goal kind of thing. Right now it's really focused on healthcare technology and they recently acquired in 2018 White Rock to become a subsidiary of it. So healthcare hopefully one day will blossom to become like its real estate solutions and become you know potentially listed as a subsidiary sometime down in the years, but right now it's still a very small segment. Now the crown jewel for Bausti is obviously the Joe Spatial Business segment. Now if you don't really know Joe Spatial Business, what exactly is it? Let me show you a quick snapshot. This actually is what it can be used for. It can be used to look at oceans, it can be used for oil and gas, it can be used to develop smarter cities, it can be even used for preparing against emergencies. And right now what do we see in COVID-19? Many countries are actually using this technology to track how COVID-19 is evolving around its country, where are people moving, how they should develop the, the, and plan the cities differently moving forward. So COVID-19 has provided yet another use for this geospatial technology. So this is really a very smart piece of technology that Bausteed really is milking for. Now Bausteed, just share with you, actually developed this relationship with ESRI since 1977. So it's a very long-standing relationship. And my thoughts were, hey, since it's so profitable, is there a risk that this partnership gets dissolved sometime in the future? So I actually ducked up for you to see. It's been mentioned also by management that they believe that they provide a lot of value add to this partnership itself. They manage a lot of the services. It's a very human-based business. It's not just on technology, but they bring this value add to the ESRI group. That's why they've been collaborating for so many years. Just in case you don't know, ESRI Singapore, ESRI Australia, and the various subsidiaries, they are owned 88.2% by Bausti. And the remaining 0.8% actually still lies with ESRI's founder. So actually it's really a win-win partnership that they've developed across the years. Now just in case you want to see the numbers for ESRI uh, contribution to the Joe Spatial segment, let me show you this over here. Since 2017, you realize that profits have been at least $20 million, correct? And as of right now, I project that the compounded annual growth rate is even higher than 10% per annum. So if we think Apple having a 10% compounded growth rate in terms of profits is at a price earnings ratio of 40, if this segment is valued at 40 times, this will already bring Bausi's valuation to close to a billion dollars. But that again is a stretch. I'm saying this segment is such a wonderful contributor and it's really the crown jewel for Bausi. The next segment that Bausi owns is actually its energy engineering segment. So this segment can be broken down further into two parts. The first is actually the international heaters and the second is the controls and electrics. The international heaters segment seems to be the bigger contributor. And what I can show you is they have actually won quite a lot of contracts even in this COVID-19 downturn. You know, oil and gas is in such a, such a doldrums situation, correct? But BIH, which is the international heater segment has actually secured $304 million worth of contracts. And this really is a segment that's, in management's opinion, gaining market share within their niche. So I'm not an engineer, so I don't know exactly how much this is in terms of its future prospects. But what I can share is the, the contract awarding as well as the revenue performance is very lumpy for the segment. But if oil and gas were to turn around, this is possibly a segment that could surprise a lot of people and, de and really deliver a lot of profits for Bausi in the coming year. Now, if you've benefited, smash your like so more people can see valuable content like this. Again, inviting you to press on subscribe to join our family become more financially savvy. Now, the last segment that Bausti actually owns is also a very important segment, and that segment is his real estate business. This has been moved out as Bausti Projects. 
You know when Mr. Wong first came into Baustead in 1996, if I don't remember wrongly, he actually brought along this pro Baustead projects as a new segment. And in 2015, they've actually listed as a separate entity itself. So just in case you don't understand what does Baustead projects do, they actually develop industrial parks and stuff. One of which you can actually go and see yourself, which is near Star Vista, the headquarters for GSK. Now I used to have a friend working there and GSK actually relocated his whole team over there. So that is one iconic project they have developed and partially owned. Not only that, they'll be developing for Razor, their Singapore headquarters. So these are very sexy names that Bowsley Projects have actually partnered with. Now Bowsley Projects actually builds and develops industrial buildings and business parks. And they have two key business segments. The first is actually a design and build business segment whereby they actually provide the service itself. Designing for Razor, for example, and eventually collecting a fee for it. The second is actually where they own the property itself after building it, either wholly or partially. So that's where I'll start the focus uh, and the discussions with. This is actually the real estate business segment. And in this segment, revenues are earned through property rental. In a lot of ways, this look like, looks like a REIT. So it's been rumored long that Bowsey Projects will eventually list all these industrial buildings into a REIT itself and crystallize some of the appreciation of the property price. And as we can realize in this snapshot, that the segment profit has been declining across the years. Ever since 2017, it seems to have picked out and seems to be declining, even though you know, the profits are very recurring in nature. So very cleverly, Bowsey Projects has actually created another method whereby they can actually crystallize some of the appreciation of property and that is actually done through this fund, uh, in industrial fund. So Bowsley Industrial Fund is where they collaborate with Metro Holdings, another listed company, and they'll be selling part of it to institutional investors, in a lot of ways unlocking the value of the property itself. Rather than earning recurring income, they're now selling up this property into the fund. And what I can show you is they have been selling this fund at a, at a seemingly pretty good price. The book value on Bowsley Projects is $125.3 million, but when they sell it into a fund, it's at $332 million. That means a gain of a $206.9 million over the book value. Wow, that is a fantastic return, correct? In many ways, many are expecting a special dividend to come out from that. But when they have sold out the property itself, that also means that in future, the recurring income from Bowsley Projects real estate segment will start to decline even further. It might eventually fully cash out and become asset light as a, as a business itself. Now let's focus back on the design and build segment, which is where Bowsey projects may be focusing in the long term. The key part to note is that this is a business where it depends on contracts being won, which can be very lumpy. In 2019, they actually won major contracts with Sabana Jurong, $200 million a piece. But in 2020, as I can show you in the bottom left, contracts seem to have dried up already because possibly many MNCs are postponing their plans to build their own industrial buildings and you know, business parks. Having said that, I do believe that the real estate business for Bowsteed projects and Bowsteed is looking quite bright. I do believe that the energy segment can recover, which is something Bowsteed naturally has exposure to. And the geospatial part through these technologies of ESRI will benefit with COVID-19. So with that, I do believe that Bowsteed is a good candidate to become the best dividend player for 2021. That's my presentation. Leave your comments in the sections below. And since you've stayed to here, I'd like to introduce you to a previous video I've done before. And that is actually on Maple Tree Commercial Trust. Why do I want to link these two together? Because I do believe that business parks are going to get more and more popular with MNCs along the years. Bowsteep Projects develops business parks. Maple Tree Commercial Trust themselves, they own business parks, the one at Alexandra. So with that, if you haven't seen that presentation, I think it's something that might interest you also. And with that, I'll show you to that video. Take care and goodbye.